Now here is Mr. Wiley Brooks, who stopped eating 17 years ago, claiming that all the elements we need to survive are in the air and an occasional glass of fruit juice. Uh, this is called breatharianism. And if it sounds hard to swallow, we're going to find out now from the man who knows. Would you please welcome Mr. Wiley Brooks. Here he is. Wiley, welcome to our show. Thank you. Let me ask you something. You, you, you haven't eaten for 17 years. You have not had a sandwich, a hamburger, hot dog, pretzel, a piece of roast beef, fish, vegetables, nothing for 17 years. Right. Well, let me explain what breatharianism is first, okay. if I might. Breatharianism But you is, haven't eaten for 17 yes, years, right, we know it. Right. right. I don't eat... Yes. Breatharianism is a philosophy that believes that the human body, when it's in perfect harmony with itself and nature, is a perfect breatharian. Now, all of the constituents that we need is taken from the air we breathe. And the fact is, there is only one thing that keeps the human body alive, and that is breathing. The food that we take is the same as any other thing we take into the body, as it becomes a habit. In other words, eating is an acquired habit, just like drinking alcohol or smoking. Everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, I wanted to share with you some of what I know about making low-cost foods that uh, fulfill calorie requirements, nutrition requirements, and again, don't cost very much, so they don't break your bank. I know there's a lot of people that are in a situation right now due to the government shutdown, uh, you know, people who are not getting paychecks due to the government shutdown possibly affecting people's EBT and SNAP benefits and all that, that people are a little bit nervous about, you know, where the future is on that. In fact, I know just from the past week or so that some uh, SNAP or EBT benefits were getting sent out early to avoid a stoppage later on. And there's certainly the, the possibility of people getting confused and not realizing they need those to last two months, not one month and everything. There's just a lot of chaos in the system. Uh, and then on top of all that, there are just people that all the time are kind of in a situation where they just don't have a lot of extra money, but they want to be able to feed their family, feed their kids. And I want to share with you a little bit about what I know about how to eat in a healthy way, in a cheap way, uh, that, you know, still tastes pretty good. I'll give you a little background on myself. I am a vegetarian, or mostly a vegetarian. I'll occasionally do some fish, and if I find roadkill that I know just got killed, I will pick that up and, and integrate that into my diet. But the I jumped into vegetarianism for a couple of reasons. Um, and this isn't like me trying to pitch it to you, but just to kind of tell you what some of the benefits are so maybe you could think about whether you want to uh, appreciate any of those. Uh, one of them is that vegetarianism, all things being equal, is less expensive than eating meat. Now, there are super expensive, like high quality, fair trade, organic vegetarian foods, and then there are like super low cost, factory farm, bottom of the barrel, garbagey meat foods, and yes, you know, you can find vegetarian foods that are more expensive than, uh, you know, certain you know, meat-based products. But all things being equal in terms of quality, it's cheaper to be a vegetarian than it is to be a meat eater. And that just comes down to the fact that it takes more energy, more effort, more farmland, more water to make a pound of meat than it does to make a pound of beans. Uh, or, you know, whatever else uh, you might be eating. So, uh, so that just works out to the basic math and the economics of it. So it's, it tends to be cheaper to be a vegetarian. There are health benefits to it, but, you know, I don't really necessarily want to get into those. They're kind of irrelevant to the, the, the topic at the moment. But certainly being a vegetarian is not unhealthy in any way, and there are lots of health benefits to it. But one of the, the kind of extra cool things that a lot of people don't realize about, it, and it's actually what was my entry into being a vegetarian, is the fact that leftovers tend to last a lot longer for vegetarian food. I mean, you, you know what I'm talking about when like there's something that has chicken in it or especially fish in it or something like that. And it's, it's getting to be like a few days like after you've had it and it's been in the fridge for a while and you're sniffing it and you're kind of like, I, I don't know, is, is this safe to eat? You don't get into that as much with vegetarian food. I, I, I mean, stuff obviously will go bad, but it doesn't go it doesn't go as dangerously bad as meat-based food tends to, and, um, and it, it just tends to last longer in general. And that was, like I said, how I kind of got into it. I was living on my own. I wanted leftovers to last longer, so I just sort of got away from using meat uh, because it's like, well, I want this to last me through the week, and I don't want to mess with you know, being, having any question marks around it. So that's sort of how I got into it. But those are a couple benefits of doing the vegetarian thing. But we're focusing primarily today on the financial benefit of it because you can eat a healthy diet that gives you all your calorie requirements uh, really inexpensively. And uh, the bedrock components that we're going to be using in this video are rice and beans. I know that's kind of generic, but they work really well. And a couple of the good things about them are that they are inexpensive. 
And they also last a long time if they are, you know, dry. These things are kind of indefinite. I mean, for all intents and purposes, they last years and years. And, uh, you know, they, they, you know, they keep their, their nutrition, they keep their, uh, their calorie uh, content and everything like that. So they're great things you can put in your pantry. You can buy them in bulk. This is a big bag of rice. This is 10 pounds. This is not the cheapest rice you can buy. This is a nice aromatic basmati rice. But even this is only $2 per pound. Uh, a pound of rice is going to give you about a uh, little more than two cups of dried rice and a one cup of dried rice is going to yield maybe two maybe even three cups of cooked rice and each cup of cooked rice is going to be about 200 calories and that's about the same for beans so uh, if you have one cup of dried rice that's going to yield two or three cups of cooked rice that's going to be uh, somewhere in the ballpark of you know 500 calories or so so you can get a lot of energy out of not that much uh, you know, raw food product, it doesn't really cost you that much. 500 calories for $2, that's, that's a pretty good exchange and it's good quality uh, calories as well. Um, so let's talk about how to make them in a way that doesn't like taste terrible. Uh, oftentimes what I'll do is I'll, I'll take my rice and I'll mix it with maybe some wild rice, I'll put some lentils in there, I've also got some quinoa, which is a great protein food here. Um, oh, and can't forget this. I mean, there have to be firearms available and yeah, it's loaded. It's totally loaded. It's a prepping channel. You deal with it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, how do you put this stuff together so that it actually tastes good? Uh, one thing that's pretty easy to do is leftovers. Remember I said leftovers last for a while. This is from last night. This is, uh, we, had, we actually had some beans and there's always stuff left over in the pot. This looks gross, but it is nutrition. It is flavor. It is calories. And you know, as long as it doesn't get too old, you let it dry out right away and use it the next day or day after that, this stuff is going to help you flavor your next meal. So you can just put water in there, boil it off, and then you can put your rice right in and it's gonna give it a lot of flavor. There are other ways that you can use kind of uh, recycled things in, in order to flavor. I mean, you can buy just salt and salt is a great uh, flavoring product. You also need salt in your diet anyway. Uh, salt can, you know, add a nice flavor to all sorts of things. You don't want to go crazy with it. But uh, if you don't want to even buy salt, you can get salt if you're buying them anyway. Old bags. is old pretzel bag, old chip bag. What's in there? It's crumbs, it's calories, flavor, fat, salt, all sorts of stuff in there. If you take this, dump it into the pot before you put the rice in, kind of stew it all up. Uh, that, you know, just a bag of this alone is going to, you know, really put a lot of nice flavor into the rice. I wouldn't suggest buying potato chips just for that purpose, but, you know, realistically, if you buy them anyway for yourself or for your kids or something like that, you might as well not throw out what's left. This uh, container here is one that I use. I just collect up. Uh, it's got like a bunch of pretzel salt in the bottom. I'll just throw it in there and then I can use it for cooking whenever I want to do that. Another great way of adding some flavor is things like this. This is a salsa, just an old salsa container. Uh, I finished up the salsa in here, but you can never quite get what's left of it out of the bottom. Put a little water in here, shake it around, pour that in, rinse it one more time, put that in, and you can use this to flavor things up. Uh, adding a nice like vegetable bouillon cube or even chicken bouillon cube in with a little bit of salsa is a great way to make like a Spanish uh, tasting rice. Or, it, any kind of like canned stuff. This is just some Indian food, uh, but if you take a little bit of this and you mix it in with anything, uh, I know buying things by the can is not the cheapest way to do it, but if you can get some flavoring out of this and spread it with a lot of other ingredients, you can get this kind of uh, you know flavoring to kind of spread through a lot of food and you know you get a lot more bang for your buck. And honestly, you could have like SpaghettiOs and that flavoring is gonna to spread to all sorts of things. And in addition to salsa, you can do like, you know, pasta sauce or really anything that has a nice flavor. You can mix it in. You'd be surprised some of the combinations you can come up with. So that is a great way of flavoring your rice so that it just, you know, has a nice flavor to it. In order to get a, a complete protein out of it, you're gonna to wanna to add some kind of legume. Here I've got some pinto and black beans mixed together. The best way to cook uh, beans is to put them into just clean, pure water first. Don't put in any salt or flavorings first. You're gonna get the, the most tender beans if you cook them in just straight water first. Cook them for quite a while until they are nice and tender and then you can add in your flavorings uh, at that point. If you add the flavorings in in advance, it always tends to make the beans a little tougher. I don't know exactly why that is. I always had kind of felt like, well, I'll put the salt in and the salt will help break it down, like, you know, like corned beef. 
uh, is like, you know, there's lots of salt in it. It makes it all nice and tender. It's the opposite for beans. And I don't know why that is, but it definitely is a thing. So cooking them to make them soft first, and then you, uh, and then you can add the flavorings afterwards. So that is going to give you a lot of calories. It's going to get you your protein and everything. But in terms of your, uh, you know, your other nutrition, you know, fruits and vegetables and things of that nature, uh, you know, it's a little bit light. I mean, you're getting a little bit from leftovers of, you know, salsa or leftovers of uh, pasta sauce or anything like that. But in addition to this, uh, what I would recommend is just find whatever are kind of the cheapest vegetables you can find at the time. Uh, you know, onions are great. They have a, a lot of great flavor. They're very healthy and you can add those in. Uh, you can get buy carrots in big bulk bags. Potatoes are okay for energy. There's not a lot of nutritional qu uh, quality to potatoes, but you can get cheap potatoes and that is another kind of bulk food that you can add just to get some fiber into your diet because, well, I guess the beans give you some fiber as well, but uh, you want to just try to mix in as much vegetable matter as you possibly can. In addition to all of these things, uh, one thing that you can do is get into the idea of collecting wild edible plants. Uh, I have playlists on, on my channel if you want to check them out about different wild edible plants. Now, I'm recording this in the middle of January right now. It's not, you know, the most awesome time for going out and find, finding wild edibles, but there are some that you can find, like, for example, raspberry bushes. If you know of an area where there are raspberry bushes, the raspberry bush leaves are completely edible. You can take those and kind of, well, they'd be dry this time of year, just kind of crumple them up and put them into your food. It's not going to be a lot of matter, but it's going to be something. If you're going to do that, you want to make sure you're picking them from an area that, you, you know, doesn't have like industrial pollutants or anything. Like if you live in a city and they're growing out of an oil can, you may want to leave that alone. It might be more trouble than it's worth. And also, again, you have to be really certain that you have, you have what you think you have. Uh, raspberry bushes, for example, have three leaves that grow like that. There's another plant that you might be aware of that has three leaves that all grow together like that, and it's called poison ivy. So you have to be really certain that you have what you think that you have, especially this time of year when things are kind of dry and maybe they aren't showing a lot of their characteristics. But even, you know, for going wild edible plants, there are lots of places where you can go and just, you know, get some kind of a vegetable that you can mix in that is going to be you know, less expensive than other vegetables. Some are out of season, they cost a lot of money, some are in season, and they are, you know, more cost, uh, cost competitive. One thing that I've done in the past, and this is, you know, intermittently available to different people, is the idea of dumpster diving. Uh, I had a great uh, organic food co-op uh, near where my, my last homestead was, and I would routinely go on, I think it was Tuesdays and Thursdays, was when they uh, would dump out their produce, and there was hundreds and hundreds of dollars of free food that was in the dumpster and a lot of it would just be laid on a on like a bed of garnish like they put down a bunch of like uh, cabbage leaves and then dump some fruits and things on top and obviously if you're going to go dumpster diving there are legal issues there are possible health issues uh, but for me it worked really well because I asked permission of the people and they were like they were totally cool with that they said that was great and um uh, I cooked everything that I pulled out of it um, because I just was over. I'm a pre I'm a prepper. I'm over overly paranoid about things, so I, I wanted to make sure that I was cooking anything that I was pulling out of there. You know, just because you know you you don't know. Uh, but that said, there was so much stuff that was being thrown away that I I would go shopping in the co-op as well, and. Very frequently I, frequently, I would come out and there would be stuff in the dumpster that was as good or better than what I had just bought in the store. And it really just comes down to the fact that if there is an apple with a spot on it, that apple is never going to get picked by anyone to buy if there are other apples without spots. So that apple with a spot gets thrown away. There's nothing wrong with it other than the fact that it has a spot, but just the people at the the grocery store know that no one's ever going to select that apple if there are other options available to them. And instead of just letting it sit there and rot in the store and then eventually like start rotting out other apples, they just have the foresight and just accept it and say, no one's going to buy that apple. We'll put it in the dumpster. Perfectly good apple. It just had a spot on it. And a lot of the stuff that gets thrown out is falls into that category. So that is another th avenue you could investigate. Obviously, you have to take, uh, you know, your responsibility of your de for your decisions. Uh, you know, there are clearly things in dumpsters that are there for a, a reason. And th you don't want those things touching anything that you pull out. But I would pull things out. I'd wash them, clean them, cook them. And uh, hundreds and hundreds, thousands of dollars of produce I've pulled out over the years. 
out of dumpsters. So there are a lot of options to you. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned oats. Oats are a great one for breakfast. If you just take some oats, put some raisins, I've got some goji berries, but like any kind of dried fruit, mix it in with oats, put some milk on it, that makes a great breakfast cereal as well. So there are lots of options for you and they can be really, really inexpensive. And if you are taking the amount of money that you would normally spend in one day and using that money to create enough food for several days, three, four, five, six, a week of days, you are effectively paying for one day of food and then eating the rest of that time for free, which, you know, hence the title of the video. <laughs> so uh, it is really possible to save an enormous amount of money if you start simple, cook a little bit. Don't be afraid of cooking. It's not that big a thing. Uh, if, you, if you mess it up, if you don't cook the rice long enough, so it's crunchy. You learn and you do it better next time. That's it. I hope you found some of this helpful. I hope some of these tips are of some use or value to you. And don't forget, be armed when you're in the kitchen cooking because we're preppers and we're paranoid, and that's the way it is. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.